I got to ask, is there anything that you still feel like you need to do that you haven't done? I mean, you've literally done everything. You're Batman. Yeah, yeah, I am Batman. I, I've, done a, I've, I've done a bit, but there's something that I really would, would love to do. Hey guys, welcome to part three of my interview with Lorenzo Lamas. This is the final part and we go off with a bang. He's going to share his wisdom and life advice with us at the end of the video. We're going to talk about all kinds of cool stuff in this. Uh, so for example, if you're discovering or rediscovering Lorenzo Lamas, he's going to give us his top three films you need to check out. So much in this video. By the way, check out the other two videos of great content there. Uh, also check out his book, linked in the description below i highly recommend this book and in that description by the way i got all kinds of cool stuff that you guys could get like for example this cool ring this is kusanagi masashagi the uh, samurai of loyalty really manly badass jewelry i got the best supplements down there linked everything i put in the descriptions of my videos by the way i'm only going to recommend stuff that i personally use myself like books like this jewelry like this supplements like this i can even save you a ton on your wireless bill man you guys gotta click that link below you know reputation is everything so i'm only going to recommend really good stuff for you but regardless please help support the channel by liking the video commenting on the video subscribing if you're not subscribed just engage with the video and then youtube will be happy and i'll be happy and then we could really kind of get these videos out there because everybody needs to watch especially this one but all three parts of that lorenzo lamas interview speaking of aikido have you ever met and or train with Steven Seagal? No, never have. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Have a lot oh. of friends that a lot of friends that have worked with them, like Branscom. Branscom did a movie with Steven. Oh Seagal. yeah, Hard to Kill. I think he was in Hard to Kill. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good fight scene they have. Yeah, Steven, I guess, doesn't have as much control over over his punches and kicks than one one would hope. Uh, yeah, I heard that too. Uh, there's stories. Uh, that's what I hear. I don't know. I never worked with him. I can't say for sure, but you could ask Branscom. <laughs> <laughs> still a loser. I remember you. Um, oh, here's a question. Because there's a really cool picture of you and Jean Claude Van Damme on the beach, right? So, did, did you ever like train martial arts with them? Are you guys like close or did yeah, you get no. the origin of that picture? Yeah, that picture was uh, we were doing a sports invitational. Uh, they did a lot of these things in the nineties where they would invite a bunch of celebrities to a ski resort or, or some tropical location, uh, Paul Mitchell, John Paul DeJoria, the head of Paul Mitchell, uh, and Patron Tequila, he would usually underwrite the expense of, of these things. And mm -hmm. Marjo Gortner, the actor who was the uh, child evangelist. Um, do you know who Marjo Gortner is? No. Okay. So Marjo Gortner. Folks out there would know would know him if they if you saw the movie Earthquake. Um, Marjo plays the uh, National Guard guy that kind of tries to abduct that girl, and kind of has a kind of played a little creepy part in that movie Earthquake. But he's done a lot of other things as an actor. But he was a a, a, a tele evangelist when he was a when he was a kid, became an actor, and then became a promoter, a motion uh, like a sports promoter. And he would do these uh, these events um, all over the world. And uh, this event that, that I met John Claude at, I believe, was in um, Estapa, Mexico, I think. And uh, so we went down there for a week of sports. They'd have jet ski races. They'd do tennis, golf. Um, they'd have poker matches, and they televise all of this. You know, and they would usually have a speaker like a. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy would come and speak about the Waterkeepers Alliance or some charity that it was benefiting. And uh, they would sell all these uh, these sports things, the sports events that the celebrities were participating in to a, like Fox TV or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that was one of those things. And uh, yeah, so I, I raced John Club in, in the jet ski. Oh, cool. and, uh, I thought I won, but he was one of the co-hosts. So at the awards dinner, he got the first place trophy. So oh, yeah. I guess funny. it pays to know people. Oh yeah, um, always. Yeah, That's but funny. he he was he was he was a really fun fun guy. And, I mean, we I can't say we were close, but uh, we hung out for a bit, smoked cigars, and had some drinks. And uh, he was married to Gladys Portuguese at the at the time, 
And I was married to Kathleen Kinmont, Cheyenne on Renegade. Yeah, sure. Uh, so the four of us uh, really enjoyed each other's company for a couple of nights there. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. And speaking of Van Damme and Seagull, you're kind of almost a cross between them in a way because you got like Seagull's height and you got, you know, the Aikido, but you got Van Damme's kicks too. Uh, so, and, and the physique, because you've always been like a really fit guy. I know in the book you talk a lot about swimming and obviously you do your martial arts. How much weight training did you do? Um, I, I did quite a bit, you know. I mean, they had me in a damn vest with no shirt on half the time. <laughs> so I, I really, I would, I would forego, you know, the craft service in the morning with the donuts and, you know. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> I, just, I, couldn't, I couldn't really do carbs when I was on the show. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say I probably trained every day. I did something every day, you know. Yeah. Um, you looked the part, so I don't doubt that kind of training was going on to maintain that physique. Like you said, you just had the, uh, you know. Yeah. Also, I was also, I, you know, I was in my 30s. It was a lot easier to stay trim, you know. Sure. Back, back in those days. Hey, let's ask for people who are either discovering some of your movies for their first time or want to rediscover. What would be, you say, your top three that you would recommend and why? Um, okay, so if you can find it, uh, there's a, a movie that I really liked to, to do, call, that I liked filming it. It was called The Rage. I played an FBI agent, mm -hmm. and it's with Roy Scheider and Gary Busey. Do I look like I need a psychological evaluation? Not at all. Oh, wow. And, and it was really a really well well produced movie. I'd say it didn't have a lot of martial arts in it, but it's a it's a part that I'm proud of as an actor. Mm -hmm. um, also, Night of the Warrior, which I produced on the streets of Los Angeles. Everybody and everything has its price, which I think uh, it has the most martial arts. I think I of any movie really. Uh, I mean, I had fight scenes with James Liu, you know. Oh, wow, sure. It's fantastic. Rick Avery was the fight choreographer. So Rick and I, again, that's where we first met on that movie. Mm -hmm. And then I did Renegade years later. And then another funny story, when I went back to flight school to get my instructor rating to teach people how to fly helicopters back in 2014, he was my flight instructor that took me through the flight training to, oh, do wow. to become an instructor. That was that was just Rick Avery and I have this uh, you know this this great friendship that goes through aviation, martial arts, and movies and television. So wow. yeah, it's, it's it's he's a great guy and he's such a phenomenal athlete himself. You know he's a master he's a master uh, gold medal winner boxer. Wow! In master class, he's still I mean to this day I think he still holds a title in, in boxing masters. Uh, in the state of California. So wow. he, he's a badass. He's a, he's, he's really a fighter. Yes. Um, so I'd say the rage with, mm -hmm. with uh, Roy Scheider, um, night of the warrior, which was with me and uh, James Liu. Mm -hmm. And then um, final impact, I think it was a good there you one. go with Jeff Langdon, yeah. of course. And Michael yeah, Worth too. And Mike Worth and uh, Jeff Langdon and, and uh, you know, Kathleen Kinmont is in that as well. Um, it was a good story. Rick Pepin and Joe Murphy wrote a really good story there. Yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah. Definitely. I'm, I'm very aware of that one, of course. And oh, oh, so you basically, I didn't really know until I read this book, but it's kind of crazy. Like you raced cars, you did uh, stand up comedy. Yeah, I was a TV star, former arthrod. Former homeowner. You did live plays, you know, because I think most people who watch the channel, again, because we're in this world of working out martial arts and action films, we know you as Renegade, we know you as, you know, Snake Eater and those kind of films, but you've literally done it all. You've even, you've even sang. You, you even had like a tough yeah. song back in the day. It's crazy. Yeah, it, you, you know, you got to keep moving or somebody's going to hit you. <laughs> And I, the reason I bring all this up is like, I got to ask, is there anything 
that you still feel like you need to do that you haven't done? I mean, you've literally done everything. You're Batman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am Batman. I, I've, done a, I've, I've done a bit, but there's something that I really would, would love to do, and that would be to return to my acting roots. You know, I started out in the business as a dramatic actor mm -hmm. um, with Falcon Crest, right? And, and then with my martial arts and things, it kind of kind of got sidetracked. I went down the action road mm -hmm. and did a lot of action movies and things like that, which kind of, I guess it, it didn't, it didn't prevent me from getting work as a dramatic actor, but I was doing so many action movies that I think the industry forgot about me mm. as being as being an actor, you know, but that's, that's who I am. First, you know, I'm an actor first. I'm a racing driver, a pilot, a martial artist, you know, second, but my real love, my first love is reading a script, getting to know a character in the script that I want to portray doing the work, whatever it is, the research that I have to do to learn more about that character and then portray that on, 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 on camera and then see that up on the screen. That's my first love. So I think if I had anything that I'd like to do before I'm called up there uh, for the final judgment, it would be to get another chance at doing some quality dramatic roles. You know, maybe as an older, I'm older, so I would be like, I'd be the the hero's dad, you know, mm -hmm. or I'd be a reluctant, uh, you know, uh, a guy that is just through extenuating cir circumstances has to overcome a tremendous amount of challenges to get to where he can he can succeed, you know, something that I can really sink my teeth into. In, in terms of a character. I think that that's my, that'd be great if I, if I got a chance to do that again. So I think that's my plan over the next few years is uh, I'll be able to stop flying because I'm flying full time now. So I'm, I'm- Yeah, you're a helicopter pilot taking people on tours, right? And every well, once well, in a while, cool. somebody recognizes cool. you that, hey, that's your renegade. It happens. <laughs> yeah, it happens sometimes. Renegade. Yeah, renegade. Where I played a shirtless, long haired, Harley riding bounty hunter, an outlaw hunting outlaws, a renegade. Um, but yeah, it's been taking a lot of time in my life because I, I have to work full time. You know, I still mm -hmm. got rent. I've still, you know, I've, I've still got to take care of my kids and things like that. So, um, but I think in a couple of years, I'll be able to slow down a little bit in the flying and, uh, and really focus more on getting out there and, and meeting some people and casting and maybe some producers and things like that and talk about getting back on film. Cause uh, that's where I see like, you know, I call it my last nine holes of my life. I see myself in front of the camera more. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I hope to see you get the show that you want. Uh, some people were asking, hey, you know, would you be interested in rebooting Renegade or hey, how about Expendables 5? But it seems like you wanna be more into, I've done the action thing. Uh, let's just kind of go more acting dramatic. Yeah, I mean, here's an example of, of, an, of an older actor that can do both, Liam Neeson. Thank you. Perfect right? example, yeah. He can still kick butt when he needs to kick butt, but his character is always weighted in, in the reality of a good script, mm -hmm. you know? So it's not just, he don't, we, we don't see Liam Neeson just doing action movies just to kick ass. His character is rooted in, in, in truth. You know, there's some truth of what his character is going through. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that would be perfect. Yeah. That would be perfect. And just one last thing, because you've experienced so much, and you do share quite, quite a bit in this book. Again, I recommend that to anybody watching this. Uh, can you share, like, the top three life lessons that you've, you know, you obviously have a lot of wisdom because you have all that experience with so many different things. Oh, wow. Um, I'd have to give that some thought. Um, well, my father told me when, when I was younger, I was probably in my 20s, and he said, you know, 
think fast, but speak slowly. Because once you let the words come out of your mouth, they're there to sit forever. Mm. So choose your words carefully, but always be thinking ahead, you know? So, I mean, those are, I, I live, I try to live by those, those, those words, you know, and you know, another, another good principle that I've learned over time is to, you know, never say anything to anybody that you wouldn't want said about you. Just that's simple. It just keeps it so simple. You know, yeah. before you open your trap to say some stuff about somebody that did you wrong, just sit on that man, count to five. Because those words again are out there in the universe forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do believe that there is karma. I believe in that tremendously. I also believe that there is a, a universal mind that's controlling the world, the universe, all the things that happen good and bad in our life, whether you want to call them God or Allah or whatever it is, it's a universal mind, a power. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can harness that power as long as we have a, a good positive thought behind it. Right. So people say, well, you know, I, I pray at night. I said, okay, well, like, what do you, what do you pray for? Well, I pray that that person that, you know, stole my bike when I was 10 gets run over by a train. I go, okay, so that's like, you don't want to pray that way. You know? So we want, we want to think positive in our life. We want to create positive energy around us because like the law of attraction, the mm -hmm. more we put out there positively, the more it comes back in the same fashion. You put negative stuff out, you're complaining about things every day of your life to your friends. That negative energy that you're putting out there is like a toxic poison. Big time. It's going to come back. Mm -hmm. So life has taught me that what we put out, we get back. Okay. What we say is there forever. Mm -hmm. And give a person the benefit of the doubt. What is it going to cost to give a person that maybe went against you, like maybe said something bad about you or something like, you don't know what this person, what that person is going through in life. They could be going through a horrible time. They could have lost a family member. You know, it could have created such a turmoil in their, in their heart that they weren't really responsible for what they did or what they said. So I tend to give people a lot, a lot of the benefit of the doubt, you know, because I want to be treated that way. Oh, of course. Yeah. That's why I'm always so respectful to people in general, because I would appreciate getting that in return and it being reciprocal, but that's always my default. I'm always going to be nice. I'm always going to be respectful. And then obviously everybody has their, um, you know, level of, okay, uh, this guy is just not my kind of guy. I want you to be nice. We have, we have a few, everybody has a fuse. Yeah. A fuse. Sure. Right? So just let it, let it burn. Let it, we, there's a lot left. Just let it burn, burn. Okay. Three times, four times. Okay. He messed, he messed around with me. Twice. Okay. That's enough. <laughs> you know, until it's time to not be nice. <laughs> but I tend to have a, a longer fuse than most people, you know, and, and I think that it doesn't hurt. Doesn't, nobody's going to call you a wimp or weak because you give a person a second, third, fourth chance, you know, in, in doing what's right. Yeah. yeah. Great way to live. Just uh, mental health is going to be way better. I could tell you're a happy, optimistic guy just talking to you spend this, uh, you know, 45 minutes or so. Yeah. And I really appreciate and I know the audience will the whole interview, but especially that message and wisdom. So yes, everybody needs to watch that multiple times and hopefully live like you do. Well, I don't, I, I don't know anything. Uh, all, I know, you know a lot. <laughs> all I know is, is my life experience and the lessons that I've learned. And, uh, and that's, that's what we're all here to experience our own lessons and our, our own, uh, you know, responsibilities. We all have them, you know, whether it's, uh, doing your homework, if, you know, if you're in school or whether it's taking care of, you know, a sick mom, if you're older, um, we're all, we're all given responsibilities. And uh, it's the way we handle them that makes us the people that we, we actually end up being. No? Yeah, exactly. Be like, be like Reno. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I used to say to myself, what would Reno do in this, in this uh, circumstance? You know, because Stephen Cannell really wrote 
a tremendously noble character in Reno, you know? He really, really did. He wrote an amazing character. Uh, I looked up to Reno. I felt it was an honor to portray him on television. I really did. I, I, I looked up to him. I wished I was more like him in many ways. And that's why shows like that are so important. Characters like Reno, uh, characters that Van Damme had played in Lionheart, for example. You definitely got heart in Lionheart. Don't ever lose it because you never get back. It's like growing up and watching, you know, like these were the guys that we want to be like. And it's funny that you say you literally are the character and played the character where even you aspire to be more like yeah, that character. I absolutely, I absolutely did. He wrote a phenomenal character and uh, it was a pleasure to, to play him. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And again, that show holds up great. And I'll be continuing to watch more on YouTube because I've been catching up to a lot of these these episodes. So. Yeah, Lorenzo, I know you got to run. I know you're you're a very busy guy, and I do appreciate the time. This this interview was phenomenal. Once again, you know, I got to thank Jeff Langton, of course, for uh, setting this up, and this is a real treat for me and the fans. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, David, very much, and I thank you, and I thank your fans for watching. And uh, maybe I'll see you on the screen sometime soon.